Hi, it's Miss Lisa from Growing Brilliant. I'm so glad to see you join us for story time today. Are you ready to read a book with me? I have a fun book today called Inch by Inch. Inch by Inch is the title of the story. It was written by Leo Leoni. If Leo Leoni wrote the story, what is his job? That's right, he's the author. Very good. Now, inch by inch is the title. It gives us a little clue about what the story might be about. How else can you tell what the story might be about before you read it? That's right, you take a look at the front cover and sometimes the back cover for the pictures and it gives you clues about what the story might be about. Should we talk about what we see on the cover and see if we can guess what it's about? Okay, what do you see? I see grass and leaves. Some are short, some are tall, some are yellow, green, and this one looks like it's green and gray. They're all different colors and all different lengths. Hey, look at this. If you look at the very top of this tall blade of grass, what do you see at the top? That looks like a little worm. That's a little worm that we call an inchworm. Just like the title says, inch by inch. An inchworm is a small worm that scoots along like this, inch, inch, inch. Would you like to make an inchworm with me? Okay, put your hand like this and bend your finger to scooch along. Inch, 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 inch. Very good. All right, should we see what the story is about? Let's open up the book. And it says, one morning, a hungry robin saw an inchworm, green as an emerald, sitting on a twig. He was about to gobble him up. That robin thought that inchworm looked like a good breakfast. Let's see what happened. Don't eat me. I am an inchworm. I am useful. I measure things. Is that so, said the robin, then measure my tail. Hmm. Let's see how the inchworm measures his tail. That's easy, said the inchworm. One, two, three, four, five inches. One, two, three, four, five. The inchworm measured his tail. Just Think, said the robin, my tail is five inches long. And with the inchworm, he flew to where the other birds needed to be measured. The robin thought that was a pretty cool thing that the inchworm could do. Maybe he was useful. <laughs> Let's see what happens next. Ooh, do you see this pink flamingo with its long curving neck? It says, the inchworm measured the neck of the flamingo. Inch, inch, inch. He measured the toucan's beak. Inch, inch, inch. Look at all the beautiful colors on this bird. It's called a toucan. The legs of a heron. Ooh. A heron is a very tall bird, and this is its head curving around this way. Inch, inch, inch. <laughs> the tail of a pheasant. Oh yes, pheasants have very long tail feathers. And here's the inchworm, inch, 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 measuring the pheasant. And the whole hummingbird do you see that little hummingbird? They're very small birds. They move very, very quickly. So the inchworm was able to measure the entire hummingbird. 
because it's small. One morning, the nightingale met the inchworm. Measure my song, said the nightingale. But how can I do that, said the inchworm. I measure things, not songs. Measure my song or I'll eat you for breakfast, said the nightingale. Then the inchworm had an idea. I'll try, he said. Go ahead and sing. Do you see the inchworm up here talking to the nightingale? What do you think is going to happen? Let's find out. Look at the nightingale. What does it look like it's doing? It has its beak up in the air and its eyes closed. Do you think it's singing? I think it might be too. The nightingale sang and the inchworm measured away. Look at that, he's coming down the leaf. He thought this is his escape. He measured and measured inch by inch. Until he inched out of sight. The end. So the nightingale wanted to do what? He wanted to eat that inchworm for breakfast, but the inchworm had to think of an idea and quick. And so he decided he would measure right out of there. It seems like his measuring was useful at all. After all, I had so much fun reading inch by inch with you today. We're gonna do some art together. Are you ready to do a project? Okay, give me just a moment. We're gonna head over to the art table and do something together. Are you ready to do some art together? So today we read the story inch by inch and in there we learned about a little inchworm who was inch, inch, inching along. And what was he doing that was useful with his inching? That's right, he was measuring. Do you remember what he was measuring? All of the birds, very good. And do you remember the pink flamingo with the long neck, inch, inch, inch? And the heron with the long legs, inch, inch, inch? And then there was a bird that had a long tail. Do you remember who had the long tail feathers? That was the pheasant, very nice. At the very end of the book, the inchworm was inching, inching, inching along through the grass as he was trying to get away from that nightingale. Do you remember? I thought it would be fun to do some painting of an inchworm in some grass. Would you like to do that with me? All right, very good. So I have a piece of paper here that I'm gonna use to make my grass on, and then I have some paint. So I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of color mixing together. Would you like to do that? Have you ever done color mixing? Oh my goodness. So when you mix two different colors of paint or anything together, it makes a whole new color. Would you like to see? All right, I'll show you. So I'm gonna add some of this paint. Can you tell me what color this is? This is yellow paint. It looks a little bit like mustard. <laughs> and then what color is this paint? You're so good. This is green. So I'm gonna put a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow on my plate. Can you see I have the green and the yellow? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm actually going to grab a little bit of the dark green paint and mix it in with the yellow paint. What color do you think that's gonna turn into? While you think about it, I'll let you know that there are two colors that mix together to make green. And that is blue and yellow. But then when you add a little more yellow to the green, what do you think you get? Can you guess? I'll show you. You get a lighter green. 
this green paint is running. <laughs> so I have a dark green and a light green now. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my paintbrush to brush the strokes onto the paper. Whoops. And I think when you go up and down on the page like this, it looks a lot like grass. So we're just gonna make some grass on the paper. You can draw and paint your inchworm however you want to. You don't have to do your inchworm in grass. You can show your inchworm anywhere you want them to be, maybe on a long leaf, like on the cover of the story, or even on one of those birds that he was measuring, or however you wanna do it. I went ahead and made some grass. I'll show you. Just like that, what do you think? That turned out to be a really pretty color green. And then I'm going to use a very special tool to make my inchworm. Do you know what I'm going to use? Inch, inch, inch. I'm going to use my finger. So I'm just going to use the tip of my finger and dip it into some of the dark green paint. You know, in the story, it described the inchworm as being green as an emerald. Do you know that emerald is a very dark, beautiful green jewel. It is. So I'm gonna use some dark green to make my inchworm. Whoops, not too much, you just need a little. And you see it's on the end of my finger. And I'm just going to dot some prints with my finger to make my inchworm. Dot, dot. <laughs> All right, and I will show you what it looks like. Just like that. Do you see the inchworm? He's hiding in the grass. But can you see him? Shh. <laughs> All right, well, that, there we go. Now, I want to tell you, I know that some of my friends don't like to get paint on their fingers. See, I have paint all over my fingers now, and I'm okay with it because I like getting messy when I do my art. But I know that some people don't like to have paint on their fingers. So I'm gonna grab another grass that I have here that I painted earlier, and I'm actually gonna use a dauber to make my inchworm. So if you don't want to put paint on your finger, you can feel free to use a dauber or a marker or crayons or whatever you have that you prefer to use to do art with. And I'm just going to use my dauber to make some dots all in the grass. This grass is a little bit more dry already. And I'll show you what that looks like. Just like that. So that's a fun way to do it too. And if you want to, you can count how many daubs you're making your inchworm out of and see how many spots it takes to make your inchworm. Like this one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I used ten dots on the dauber to make my inchworm. <laughs> I had so much fun doing art with you today. I hope you did too. The next time we get together for show and tell, I would love for you to show me what you did to make your inchworm. We'll see you later.